That's really sweet of you. Thank you. Shout out to Alec. Thank you. Okay. So it's a different of two perfect squares. That was really, really kind. I appreciate that. Uh, so it's a difference of two perfect squares. Uh, why that's important is because I think about how I factor that problem. And some of you kind of forgot to take out the 16 maybe a few minutes ago. And maybe you got 4x plus 8, 4x minus 8. Yeah. Yeah, because you just get like, oh, you're like square root and square root and that thing. It's, it's something that happens. I just have to call your attention to how important it is to taking out a GCF. Um, but, you know, some of you notice this sort of pattern exists where it's like something plus something, something minus something else, right, every time. That is our special product pattern. If you have something plus something times something minus, that same thing, you know, that actually results in a difference of two perfect squares. So instead of foiling this, you could just square the first part, square the last parts, and put a minus in between them. Do you have a question, Anthony? No? Okay. So again, I just squared my firsts, squared my lasts, and I subtracted. Because I know that this is just factored, a factored difference of two perfect squares. We also talked a little bit about problems we could still apply the square root method to, but we're trinomials instead. Uh, I don't know if you remember these, but on your homework they came up as like 16x squared is your first term. And then like 81 is your last term and you tried to AC group that and you took 16 times 81 and you were like, what? Too big. I don't like to AC group that. We gave you that other method in that case. You could square root the front and square root the back. Those problems, so this here and this here, are what we call perfect square trinomials. They get their name because they're three terms, aka trinomials, and the first term is a perfect square, and the last term is a perfect square. A perfect square trinomial is actually a special product pattern. It is. Um, it happens when I square binomials. So, for instance, if we have, you know, A plus B quantity squared, if I foil that out as a plus b times a plus b, I would get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Same thing if I had a minus b quantity squared. That would foil out to be a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. It would foil out to be a perfect square trinomial. So indeed, a perfect square trinomial is a special product pattern. In short, I don't want to write this out as y plus 4 times y plus 4 if I don't want to write that out and FOIL it, I can use this idea of a perfect square trinomial to get me the product. It works very similarly to the difference of two squares. You're going to square the first thing you see. So we're going to square y. That's y squared. And you're going to square 4. 4 squared is 16. In between, it's just 2 times the first times the last, or 2 times y times 4. 2 times y times 4. Uh, that's going to be 8y. And because these were all plus signs, both of those signs are plus signs. So again, it's just a way to get around foiling. What's up, Alec? 2 times the first times the last. Uh, your textbook says it's 2 times a times b. So you square the first thing you see. You square the last thing you see, and then you take 2 times a times b, or 2 times the first thing times the last thing. So I took 2 times y times 4. Uh, in my head, I rearranged 2 times y times 4 to do 2 times 4 times y. You okay with that? Yeah. All right. It'll work the same way with the next one. Um, if you don't feel like foiling 3p squared minus 2 times 3p squared minus 2, we know that when we square a binomial, we get a perfect square trinomial back out. So indeed, that perfect square trinomial is a special product pattern. Uh, it works very similarly when there's a minus sign. 
So you're going to square the first thing. I'm going to square 3p squared. You know when you square something, it's like you take your time itself, right? 3p squared times 3p squared is 9p to the fourth. You square the last thing. 2 times 2 is 4. And then the inside is always 2 times your first times your last, I think, for the benefit of the folks at home. I got 2 times my first times my last. 2 times my first times my last. So I'm going to take 2 times 3p squared times 2. Uh, that's like 4 times 3p squared or 12p squared. The last symbol is always a plus. The second symbol will be a minus. The last symbol is always a plus because you're squaring a negative or you're squaring a positive. Anytime you square a negative, positive, square a positive, that's positive. So that's why your last symbol there is, is positive. So again, these are just special formulas. If you don't like them, you don't have to use them. You can FOIL. I'm not saying we can't do that anymore. It's just another way of looking at the problem. That's all I'm showing you today. So these are not formulas you have to memorize necessarily or anything like that. Uh, they're just really nice to have. And just be aware of the fact that there are differences of two squares and perfect square trinomials out there. Okay. Now, how are you going to decide if you like them or not if you never use them? So what you're going to do in the next little chunk of notes for today is I want you to try them just one time. Give them a whirl. Uh, I don't want you to FOIL A and B. I want you to try to use your special product pattern, your difference of two squares, your perfect square trinomial. Uh, and then for part C, I used to teach a special product pattern for cubing a binomial. Uh, we don't any longer do that in our curriculum. So uh, this one you're kind of just stuck doing out the long way. I think as a department we kind of came up with the fact that it's just memorizing that formula, you know, kind of forces out some errors that don't need to be there. So just FOIL and distribute. So you're going to go ahead and take a minute and try those out. I'll show you the answers in a second. I'll record again. So part A, and you see that I don't have any work, you know. For those of you that don't like to show work, check it out. You don't have to show work. Uh, Geo, yeah, right up your alley, dude. Uh, so 49F squared minus 9. Uh, part B is 16t squared plus 48t cubed plus 36. And then part C, mm, yeah, long way it is. I'll go ahead and show you that answer. Okay, does anybody have any questions about those? And then the independent practice that follows this uh, is just an independent practice for the entire section 5.3. So it's kind of like a mixed bag of stuff that you should be able to do from this section. What's up, Jenna? Like I did off to the left in the green there. Somebody asked me that same question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, we like we never really write it that way. So you're going to see this more often than you would see that, for sure. Any other questions about that? You did a nice job. Okay, so now you have the independent practice. There is a word problem. The word problem, uh, you know, I'll show you a little bit about the setup in a couple minutes. I'll let you kind of mull it over for a minute. Uh, maybe with your neighbor there. Uh, so you have a little bit of a word problem and then two other practice problems to try. Uh, your assignment for tonight is that 5-3 practice B. Again, if you weren't here yesterday, uh, it was distributed to you yesterday, so I need to pick it up out of the back. I'm going to record a little bit of this. Um, uh, you know that T is your eventually going to equal the product of two things. The number of wells times the amount each well produces. That will give you your total amount of oil. So you have to take some time to either multiply W times O as a function or O times W. I did O times W because it's easier for me personally in my experience just to distribute a binomial into a trinomial. I have, there's no other reason. It's just personal preference, to be honest. You could do it the other way. 
Um, why I like this problem is because you haven't had some messy numbers to work with in a while. Uh, it doesn't always work out cute to be like, oh, t plus 4, t minus 7, foil. Like, it's not always that cute. Sometimes it's nasty. And I like this one because that reason reminds you that in the real world, the numbers aren't always pretty. So it gives you a little bit of practice working with something that's real. Um, and so I like this problem for that reason. That's just your general setup. I wrote you a little note. I typed you a little note in your notes. I'd like you to try this problem even with the messy numbers because there's still, you know, you got to practice using your calculator from time to time, multiplying some things together. I want you to get some practice with that. The answer can be found in two locations, Blackboard, uh, also in your textbook. I wrote you a little note there. Uh, so you could look this up and then, you know, come with questions about it when we come back in on Monday, okay?